Warning! We're all a little mad. Oops. This is an episode 12 and 13. I don't care, I'm not fixing it. What's up everyone and welcome to the SCNI TV podcast for Once Upon a Time. Season 1, episode 16 and 17, not 12 and 13. Um, Heart of Darkness and Hat Trick. I'm your host Dom, with me, Nikki, Rachel, and Jake. Hola. How's it going? It's going. It's going. Now that I got my internet back. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so uh, what did you guys think of these episodes again? Again. Still... Oh, I still um, yearn to have a hatter back. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, honestly don't care about a hatter. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. I will explain why later. Okay. Um, first question, though, to you. To me? Which episode did you prefer? I prefer... So here's the thing about okay. Hat Trick, which is I like it better than the other one. Because mm -hmm. I like Wonderland. Wonderland is awesome. It's my favorite realm um, in this show. So, on that fact alone, I like this episode better. Okay. Cool. Uh, hat trick for me as well. But for every reason. For both Wonderland and the Mad Hatter. <laughs> because right? that's really all that matters. Uh, Rachel? Uh, I like hat trick more. But I do like uh, Snow in the other one. I like her. I hate you Snow. like Snow... But you didn't like Mar Mary Margaret. Yeah. It, okay. She, it, she's like, no. I just like I like evil snow in that one episode, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so, Nikki, question right back to you. Um, I'm don't, not don't a be fan. different. Don't be different. Say hard no, 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 no. I'm don't never, be different. <laughs> I'm never a fan of the Snow and Charming episodes. Yeah. It just well, seems, they seem to drag and. It just seems like it's been overdone, even though it's only episode 16. You know, it's yeah. just, it's like, I felt, it feels like I've seen it so many yeah, times already. I mean, this, this arc has been dragged on for the whole, this whole half of the season. Like, it yeah. started with episode 12, you know, like, yeah, they were, like, falling for each other or whatever, but, you know, the arc began at, like, the, the halfway mark, 12. And, exactly. You know, it's, it's going on straight through, and, you know, it's all. It's been set up beforehand, but this is just the focus on the arc, and it's just, you know, it's it feels so overdone at this point to me, anyway. Yes. So, I like Hattrick better. Um, to be honest, I didn't remember Hattrick at all. I was, like, watching it for the first time. Yeah. Well, and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, the Hatter is, you know, such a character, but we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. We're starting yeah. off with uh, episode 16, uh... Heart of Darkness, um, you know, we have the whole Mary Margaret storyline that's, you know, carrying on that we're all bored and sick of. Someone stole her jewelry box. We know it's Regina, you know, but well, the air vents yeah, got the murder is, weapon. Like I said last time I was on, this is the start of, like, the storyline I didn't like. Yeah. <laughs> like, how can you supposedly know someone, you've known someone all their life and think that this isn't a setup? Yeah. Yeah, I think this is where, because I remember when I started watching Once Upon a Time, it was with my, my family, and we all kind of just, like, stopped watching because of this exact arc. And then I came back to it about six months afterwards, so, you know, before season two. And, uh, yeah, it was just, <sighs> I don't know, it had to take a break in order to be able to absorb it because it was just, it was really, really bad, especially yeah. watching it from week to week. Yeah, I, I just had that feeling like, you know, I was, I think at this time I was, I was also watching like CSI and stuff. So I'm like, uh, to be honest, Heart of Darkness, Heart of Darkness for me is like the last episode that I absolutely hate for the remainder of the season. Um, everything else is really interesting. And I think from like, I was able to forgive it at the time and, uh, you know, still kind of 
um, at the time because it fell in between like some amazing episodes. You know, like mm-hmm. we we just came out of the the Red Riding Hood episode, and you know, following it is the Mad Hatter episode. So, you know, not every episode for every season can be fantastic. Even some of the yeah. best shows have an episode here and there that are just awful. And for me, this is one of them, unfortunately. It feels like that's kind of the case for all of us. Um, I'm sure there's parts yeah. of it that we liked, but for, for the most part, I think we're all in agreement that this storyline is played out. Well, romance works um, better as a subplot, not a main plot. And um, I think the Enchanted, For- Enchanted Forest parts of that episode I like better. Yes. Because we're in the Enchanted Forest, and the romance is the main plot, but because it's surrounded by all these other elements, I can tolerate it more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mary Margaret herself isn't that great of a character. Snow White is slightly better, but Mary Margaret in like normal world is boring. Yeah. She is, and yeah. Honestly, I'm not interested in her story at all. I honestly don't care what happens and to her. To me, that's honestly how I felt all the way through the rest of the show with Storybrooke uh, Snow, like from here season one straight through till present day now season five if by the way if i forgot to mention if you're not caught up on the whole show season five um at the time of doing this leave because we're gonna spoil shit so um, we're gonna spoil shit yeah yeah all the shit spoiled so come back Mm -hmm. after after but in uh, season five um snow what was it? That one episode when they were in the underworld snow's like i don't want to be mary margaret anymore i want to be snow white again you're the exact same yeah, you haven't changed. Snow White has become Mary Margaret, and I honestly don't think she's going back because no. she's never shown any signs of old snow. Unless since the curse, unless they focus more next season on um, splitting character personalities, you know, like who's to say that Evil Queen is the only one that goes through that? Snow may go through it as well, and I think that would be great benefit to that character. You know, yeah, um, talking to herself. I can just see old snow. What the hell are you doing? You know, because well, you have you have like in this episode here, you have snow like in the effects of what happens after, you know, she she forgets about charming and she's clearly a, a completely different person. Oh yeah, like, just a little bit. The, the hit, dwarves trying to and hit birds. dwarves, yeah, she's trying to smash the bird. Like dwarves and Jiminy are trying <laughs> to have an intervention with her. Look, know, look what you're right? doing to Happy. They they had they had papers already written. Yeah. And stuff and they had Hopper there and they had <laughs> Jiminy Cricket as the mediator. Oh my god, the intervention will crack me. No one that, is, no one ever listens to Jiminy and that's kind of no. sad. I mean it was amusing. Snow did. Snow listened. She she listened to him this time. He oh, goes, no. it's not fair to take this out on your friends and she goes, No, you're right. I'm gonna take it out on the evil queen. That's not what he meant, but that, that, <laughs> sure. that's what he said. He wasn't specific, so... Yeah. Choose your words wisely. This is, this is the one and only time somebody listened to Jimny, and it, it kind of blew up in his own face, because that's not exactly what he meant. But yeah. But yeah, she's like beating the shit out of guards, stripping them naked in the forest, leaving them with nothing. Like, even even present-day Snow, like, when she ha- she's on a mission, not Mary Margaret, but Snow, you know, like, whatever, she's going... She's not going to strip the... She'll leave him the boxers or something. Like, there's no point in taking... You know, his boxers. boxers. You know, like, is she wearing his boxers? Like, why did she take those? You know, you gotta hide your scent. Well, back then, they didn't have underwear. That was a very fancy thing to have. Back then? That's why, back in the Tiana Forest. (laughs) I mean, it is kind of like a medieval era, kind Mm. of. You know, different universe, different rules. It's true. They didn't. They did, yeah, they, Maybe this they, realm has underwear. Some realms don't have underwear. They, did, they didn't have underwear. That's why they wore, wore so many like layers under their skirts. Uh, maybe. I'm not, I don't know. I, w- I wasn't they were referring... They commando all day, every day. I wasn't but, referring uh, to, to the ladies wearing dresses. I was talking about the men in the uniforms. Hey, you know? you. What do you yeah. wear under the kilt? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. So... Uh. I don't know, you know, uh, Grumpy's like, you know, we should go to Rumple and fix this. He's the most powerful guy ever. And she's like, oh, really? He could do anything? Sure, let's go see him. And then, you know, that's where Rumple lets out, you know, if you could bottle love, you could do anything. Something he hadn't been able to bottle up until this point. And by the end of the episode, he last, bottles it. It was like his last, it was the last one thing he had left to. Yeah. Is there no other couple that was madly in love with each other in this town? 
Apparently not. It was true love, not just in love. I'm well, sure I mean, there are, we've seen a lot I'm of I'm sure love. there is others, but yeah. They're the epic the epic. And true and for the fact that Why are they the epic? True why love? why does why does true love have to be bottled by two strands of hair? I mean, that's, those are the easiest ways to get two pieces of one person, or of two people. I guess it could have been anything. But. Yeah. I guess it could have been. I, but I'm sure he's not going to ask for, like, a toenail clipping or anything, because that'd be just gross. No, but, like... It'd be, it's just easier to get hair. I guess. It's just, it's a weird ingredient for a love potion. Like, I don't know. I mean, oh, what? I knew he could have easily made a mistake when he took Charmaine's cloak, and you know it, it had fur hair. on it. It could have been cat hair. It could have been horse hair. It could have been something. And then, oh, oh look at that! Snow loves a horse. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. But yeah, I don't know. And then, like this episode, we also see Robin Hood's arrow, bow and arrow, for the first time. Um, mm -hmm. This technically isn't Robin's arrow, so bow and arrow, so to speak. It's it's rumples but robin goes to steal it i don't know if it was if he was trying to reclaim it or, or i don't remember that you know the story exactly but i know that's next season i don't um, say we'll get to it yeah <laughs> is it next season or is it season three i think it was actually season three yeah i can't remember i'm pretty sure it was season no it wasn't because sean mcguire was robin hood in season three when regina was looking for a true love so it's got to be season two um yeah so we'll get to that next summer um, you know, and supposedly it always finds its target, except for this one time. Because Charming jumped in front of it. It's not like the arrow's gonna go whoa, 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 it around him. Magic arrow, it could do it. If <laughs> if this, we've seen we've seen the arrow do some crazy shit, like shoot behind somebody and it like boomerangs back and gets him anyway. Like, yes, he jumped in it front bow. at the very last second, but Patriot don't, arrow. but do not claim that this bow always finds its target if it does not. So. Um, well, maybe that was in, its intended target. I mean, because Snow is not exactly who she is, even though, like, she really wanted to kill the queen at that point, that's not what her heart wanted. It was like, I don't know, it's really complicated because of all the magic and bullshit. And, ugh. I think she, part of her actually did want to kill the queen, and because... Oh, of course. So, she... They said that her love was taken away. So, like, she doesn't have compassion or anything like that. Right. But I think we know that, and later in the episode, Rumpel talked to Charming about her going down the dark path, and once you go that, once you go down that road, you can't get back from it. But she's already been on that path. We've seen in season four, and, like, I think it was in season two. She was already on the path to darkness anyway. I think deep down, even with her, even if she still had her love, she still wanted to kill Regina. She's all, I mean, even now, she's still, like, there's times where she's like, oh, I should have killed her, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But. Passion always burns out. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. She's more good than evil. Yeah. Mm. But, but you know, when, more evil than good. when Charming jumped in front of the arrow, she saw that, you know, he, she was, or he was willing to die for her. And up to this point, because she had no memory of him, she's just like, who the fuck are you? Go away. Get away from me. Get off me. You know? Right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. You know, and then... Yeah, uh, some guy just goes and kisses you. Seriously, dude. And then as soon as the uh, the spell is bro broken, all of a sudden, King James Ben come, take him away, and, you know, this is when Snow and the Seven Dwarves rally up to go get him back. Henry. So. I didn't understand. Okay. Uh, Henry. Is it James? When... James. When, um... When they take him away, he they're like, oh, leave her. She means nothing to us, right? I understand. And then when he yells the snow out of the freaking they that should have clicked into the guard. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. There's a bounty on her head. We go back for her and get that money. Well, they almost killed her, so they could have gotten the bounty yeah. that way. I don't know. Maybe Either way. They, they, they may not have been money. focused. They're focused oh, on, um, on what King James is telling them, and that's, that's getting... The so. king said... Because the king said there was a reason why, a few episodes back, he said there's a reason why you don't kill her. Because if you kill Snow, that only makes um, David love her more, and that's not what the king wants. Right. So right. You keep her alive. I like him her. Yeah. Yep. But still, they could have, you know, 
turned her, her into the queen. Yeah, not turned her into the queen. Not killed her. So they could have grabbed her too. So I thought, I thought that was weird. I was like, wait, okay. I understand they don't know who she is because he never had no one says her name. But then he yells her name. Really? He was probably just referring to the snow on the ground. You know? Yeah, right. There was snow. Oh, snow! Yeah, there was. <laughs> like, <laughs> Everybody yells longingly as someone else gets dragged off uh, after rain. the things on the ground. Rain! You know, like, yeah. Yep, that's what I he did. Could have, he could have been slurring and he was really saying no, but it came out snow. <laughs> that's what I did. Uh, today I went outside and the sun went, sun! No, <laughs> I'm going to start doing that every time I go outside. <laughs> Just oh, scream yeah. whatever the weather is. November's going to be fun. <laughs> oh god the wind's gonna blow it's gonna go wind <laughs> every time the weather changes sunset sunrise rain snow clouds overcast i'll just scream it every time it changes i'm Fantastic. getting earplugs <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna become a fad and everybody in the neighborhood's gonna be doing it and i'm gonna be like i need to just rip out my eardrums right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i want to be deaf please yeah. But then, uh, you know, back in Storybrooke, we're dealing, you know, with the aftermath of, you know, Mary Margaret frame job, and, you know, she gets arrested, she's locked in the cell, the results came back, and, you know, it's positive for uh, heart, so, you know, our... Uh, it's positive for a heart. Positive for a heart. Positive for a human heart. <laughs> heart. Catherine's heart. Yeah, it's a heart. Now. <laughs> Test results are back. It is a boy. Um, so, <laughs> baby Neil. Um, <laughs> foreshadowing what? Yeah, foreshadowing. <laughs> but uh, Rumple comes in to to, to <laughs> take on his apprenticeship as her uh, lawyer. It's just like, yep, I'm your lawyer now. But uh, she's like, I can't pay, and he's like, Yeah, I'm invested in your future. Which was Never the same me. line that he gave, you know, back in the Enchanted Forest, and it's true. He is. He uh, wants what the curse he... to be broken. What if he invested in now? Because technically... The curse. He wants the curse broken. Technically, the, but Snow isn't required for the curse to be broken. No, but... Emma is. Emma is, and that's Emma's mother, so... He's playing both sides of the fence right now. <laughs> yeah. Because Emma's acting out of compassion, as we see in uh, Hat Trick, how she's going off looking for her and everything. And don't forget, he has um, knowledge of the future. In a way, events transpire, so he needs everything to continue going as he sees it. And if anything gets changed, things may not happen. So yeah, he is invested. So, but um, so he basically leaves a uh, a key in her blanket. Um. So personally, I think it was Regina that did it, but you know. Oh, no, they said um, Rumple did it. Rumple did it. Rumpel did it. We Regina find out. We found out next episode. Yeah, that Rumpel and Regina had like a little plan going. Uh, Rumpel put it in the cell so that uh, she would leave, and yeah. Rumpel basically guaranteed to Regina that she would use it, which she did. But he didn't mention the fact that she he knew she was going to return because he has knowledge he totally of the did. future. Yeah. Well, he's got knowledge. We know he's a, he has the seer powers. You know. But does Regina know that? No. Because it no, sounds she has like no she does. I don't think anybody knows that. So. <clears throat> Even to this day, I don't think anybody knows. Yeah, up until like everybody's like, "Oh, why doesn't he use it now?" Don't don't forget, in like season three or four, he died and was resurrected when he came back through Neil and all that. You know, like it's that's when he lost somehow. Lost it. Yeah, he lost sight of the future or whatever. So, um, but yeah, so, um, you know, we have the the whole. Regina conversation with Emma, you know, when they're interrogating her, and Regina's like, you know, evil isn't born, it's made. And that's kind of, this is the first time we've heard it, and this is where it, it started, and it continues on in the show, you know, still to yeah. this day. But evil is born. We've seen it be born. Cruella? It's called, and, and evil is born. It's called, uh, no, Cruella, it's called Cruella. Lily. Lily. Cruella wasn't Lily and born Cruella like were born that. people. No, Cruella was born like that. She totally was. No. She was. She came out all disturbed. Her mother cause... was a complete C-U-N-T, and right. that's what made Cruella that way. No, she, because she had no, the very, in that episode, like, her mother said that Cruella, like, even at, like, when Cruella was, like, eight years old, she killed her first father. Like, yeah, Cruella did that by herself. She grew up in a shitty environment. She was a product Cruella of was, the shit, was the reason for that. No, the mother was. 
the no, her mother was really fine. Bad. No. And uh, when go, your go child back. is go back and watch it. Her I'm mother pretty was talking sure it was about... the mother because no. you know you Don't... either think your child is an angel or you think your child is the devil, and it's there's like. So which one is your child? Mine is an angel. Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I've heard her speak demonic. So have I. <laughs> uh, it sounds an awful lot like Five Nights at Freddy with sounds, right? Pretty much. Um, you know, we also had David go in to see Dr. Hopper and have like a, a therapy session for missing time. It was like, it was like hypnotism of yeah, some sort. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, this helps him remember things in another he? realm. How does this work? Well, I mean, it's still him. Well, because it's because just repressed he, memories. yeah. Well, he's remember remember because he was in a coma when the it hit when the curse hit, so it affected him differently. So he has his memories probably, but they're just they're, they're a jumbled mess, and some they're just jumbled in there because yeah. he's getting flashbacks and, and he they're mixing and matching, and he's not knowing what the fuck's going on. Alex and Chat saying Jacob is right. Uh, Adam and Eddie have. St- Stated that Cruella was born evil. Mm. Um, I disagree. I don't care what the show creators say. He just wanted to disagree. To disagree. I don't even think <laughs> Lily was born evil. It's just you know how you no. no, we're gonna we're gonna get more Cruella backstory at some point, and there'll be like a spell cast on the womb. Right. Someone cast a spell on the baby. Yeah. But either I mean yeah I just the whole jumbled up memories. Because yeah. David wasn't affected by the curses like everyone else, so yeah, it's a lot of people. Lot... Some people were affected differently. Yeah, I mean, people got different punishments. I think if on. I think so. if other people tried Doctor Hopper's hypnosis too, they probably have you know uh, flashbacks. Because don't forget, this isn't the first time we've seen this. Graham no. also had the the flashbacks. You know, With true love's kiss. Yeah, so. I mean, there there are things that are happening that let them see repressed memories, and not all of it has to technically be a spell. That's true love. Yeah. When something yeah. when something can affect the spell, affect the curse, it happens. Yeah. Like true love's kiss, and then and I don't hope, you know I don't necessarily think that Graham and Emma had true love. Like yes, they cared for each other, but I don't think it was true love. You know, it was. If, I don't know how to explain. I think it was like. He was starting to pull away from. I there was a reason he. W- there, Emma was the reason he was pulling away from. Regina. Uh, Regina. So she, he wasn't under her thumb all the time, and he started. It was almost like he started opening in his eyes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it may have been true love for him. I just, it's definitely not true love for Emma. That's for sure. He may. Just, he might have felt there. something because Emma's. Emma's magical, and so when he kissed her. Or, you know, when he was next well, to her, yeah, he, that, that felt, that too. he felt that. He felt something when he hasn't felt anything for so long. Yeah. Uh, we also had August uh, basically telling Henry to look in the book. And that's when, uh, you know, he goes, the last time I tried to help, I ended up in a sinkhole. And then, like, I just got mad again because I was like, that fucking mine. Like, still don't know what was going on in there. And then... Uh, <laughs> We have, uh, you know, Henry scouring and he finds out, you know, the keys that can open any door and he steals them from his mother and has Emma try a key that happens to be the key that opens the door. I mean, Henry, it's very obvious what keys work in that lock and what don't. This is a some very... Some have teeth and some do not. <laughs> this, is, this is a very um, obvious kind of lock. It is a pinhole. Pinhole. You probably As put a in... paperclip in there and it'll work. Yeah. As in... A key with with as Nikki said, teeth will not fit. It's you can look at it. It's like does the the square peg fit into the circle brick? No, it doesn't. It does the, the slot brick. does not the slot, whatever. I have a feeling no, Henry Regina didn't pass never, that Yeah, Regina never bought him one of those little put the shapes in the right things box. Ways. But the the best part about it is the square never fit into the circle, but the circle almost always fit into the square. So I tried. I don't know. I tried. The fact that the fact that Emma didn't believe Henry, you know, he brought her this ass load of keys from his mom. And some of them have like crossbones and skull. It was like freaky looking keys. 
you're not going to believe that something's up. <laughs> I mean, skeleton keys are supposed to open any door. Any door. Usually there's supposed to be one skeleton key, but she had right. a whole freaking ring <laughs> I full. know, I think right? they may have been skeleton keys for certain, like, types They're of locks. Key. They were a key for every single lock in that town. Well, like, it may have been like, oh, here's one with two prongs. This two-prong skeleton key opens every two-prong lock. You know, here's the one zero-teeth key opens every zero-teeth lock. You know, Either way, of... it opens up every lock in yeah. that town. Those yep. open up everything. So. And, like, you know, she opens the door with this key, and then she finds the knife, and she's like, oh, shit. And then she's like, she goes straight to Emma, I mean, um, to, to Mary, and she's like, well, this was found. And it's like, you didn't tell her about the big ring of keys that was there, you know, that helped you I mean, and not open only up that, your apartment? Um, the knife... <sighs> they say it was a huntsman knife. Huntsman's knives are usually serrated. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Um, just there's, like a regular, this is more like, like a huntsman's yeah, dagger. <laughs> yeah. There was, there was no blood on it, or hair, or anything, and on nothing on the on the thing it was wrapped in. Yeah. I mean, it's just, things don't add up. And it was like, people, you're... Well, usually people will clean uh, the knives or something, you know? But like, there's still going to be something left. Bleach it. Whatever. But... Uh, if they uh, really think Mary Margaret did I don't think Mary Margaret was going to do that. <laughs> Alex in chat is uh, saying that... Um, uh, well, he's asking, uh, Nikki, do you still like Emma in this episode? Are, are we at the point where you, you absolutely hate Emma yet? No, Emma is not being stupid right now. She's acting out of compassion. She's being a person, an actual person who's doing her job. Um, so, no, um, I haven't, by this time, I hadn't developed any hate for Emma. Mm -hmm. You started hated her when she started believing. That's when it was, because when she <laughs> did believe that, well, like... <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean... Maybe. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. So, like... I I cannot stand the fact that her name is Mary Margaret. Um, it's just like, I hate. It's like uh, country the two singers. Names? Yeah, it's like country singers. Well, where they always have the two a, names. It is a southern thing. Like Toby Keith. Like Dolly Parton. Wait, that's her full name. Duh. Okay. <laughs> Since my my. Uh, I was gonna say, who do you know's sister? first name is Parton? Like. Okay, I I know my sister in law doesn't. Oh, my stepsister in law, whatever. Her husband, his name is John Eric. I I can't get over yeah. it. Like Billy no, Ray. don't call him John. You call him John Eric. I'm like, so so, so I've now. decided. Hey I've decided you. From now on, I'm no longer gonna call her Mary Margaret. I'm gonna call her Eminem. Eminem. <laughs> you know what? That makes her such so much much so much better she's, of a character already. Just she's gonna turn into name. a rapper. So please no. A candy rapper. An Apollo candy wrapper. There actually were zero lost references in this episode that were new, as opposed to, like, you know, August being the eighth month and stuff like that. Like, there were no new... I watched this episode twice. One time was specifically to find something, anything, that was a lost reference, and I couldn't find anything. So, out of stuff that we didn't already have, there was nothing new for a lost reference in this episode. Um, but we had, you know, uh, Hat Trick, on the other hand. Hat Trick! Hat Trick! Where, this is Hat Trick! Uh, we had uh, Jefferson's um, house, his uh, house number was 316, which uh, the second to last season, or the last season, I, I think it was the second to last season of Lost, when, yeah, second to last, when they actually got off of the island, uh, the plane that they got rescued on was a Jira Flight 316. So, um, yeah. Rachel's just like, really? Really? More Lost? I think Rachel needs to sit down and watch Lost. Uh huh. I'm not gonna happen. I think you do. Uh -uh. It'll be your new favorite show. I tried. I tried watching it with my husband. You couldn't do it. It'll be your new favorite show. No. Um, I think I've only ever made it to the first. It leaves first, me angry. Like, I can't tell you now. 
<laughs> to like the third episode and then I pass out and then I I don't even bother after that because I'm just just not into it. I finished. I'm just not into you. <laughs> what was that, Jake? <laughs> no, I finished Lost. Well, I watched Lost when it came out and I was young at yeah. the time, um, just a baby. But I watched it. I thought it was cool. But I actually have never seen it since then. So honestly, these references that you're talking about, I have no idea. Yeah, what they are. I like I said. Sorry, I recommend, lost. I'm just not that into you. I recommend going back and watching it. It's it's something that it, maybe <clears throat> someday I'd like to consider for a rewind, and uh, then maybe maybe if Rachel was on board, she'd start you know understanding a lot of these references and. And especially after, you know, having that, it's it's a lot easier to piece things together because that show is just, everything is jumbled. It's worse than, and it's worse than Once Upon a Time trying to figure out, okay, this is, this is like, Jake, you were trying to explain last week how, you know, how it sounds like uh, inviting one of your friends to watch and trying to explain and catch them up and this, this, they're like, what the hell is going on? It's like, oh no, this happened, this happened, this happened. But here you're just like, okay, so... We know these are two separate realities, but then when we go into, um, and it's not just a reality, it's, it's their actual past, but when we go into the past and we're in the Enchanted Forest, not only do we have to realize that this is their past, but we also have to logistically try to figure out where in their past, in this timeline, it is that everything takes place, because it's not done sequentially. Like, it may be sequential to this episode, but in terms of everything, <clears throat> it's not sequentially fitting in. Like, we, we've we seen, like, last episode, or this episode, when, uh, no, it was last episode, when it opens up with Red helping uh, Charming, and Red turns into <laughs> the wolf. Um, like, that obviously happens after the Red Riding Hood episode, but we've had episodes before the Red Riding Hood that have gotten to that point, like, two other times, and then the Red Riding Hood was before those and then by the end of the red riding hood it fell after so it's just like this weird jumble of a puzzle and lost that's how the entire show is so it's 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 a uh, it's crazy but yeah um so this episode continues basically exactly where the last one left off uh where emma, emma goes looking for eminem um and uh in the process no no we're doing it <laughs> well, the real Slim Shady, please stand up. Oh, God. I, I refuse to call her the double name again. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, no. no, I can do that after the curse is broken, but for the next three podcasts, her name is Eminem. So, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, she goes looking for Eminem and accidentally hits Jefferson with her car. And this is our introduction to Jefferson. Yay. Um, Yay. Like I said, this was like a whole new episode to me, so I didn't rem- I didn't remember yeah. any of it. I remember my feeling my feelings when I first watched this episode too. I watched it. I remember the, my feelings on this whole entire episode. Yeah, and it was just like okay, so the very first time you see him when Emma like hits him with the car, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm looking for my dog, um, Spot," you know, and then. He brings her to the house and then drugs her and all that stuff. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, who, I was like, who oh are my you? God, do we have a serial killer in the that's, a, that's exactly what I thought yeah, the first time Regina. I saw this. No, like, <laughs> I no, thought, like a legit like male serial killer. And I'm I starting thought, to think. I'm starting to think now. Like, in my head, it's Hannibal who Lecter. the hell is this guy? And you know, like Jack the Ripper stuff, stuff like that yeah, started popping that's into what my I head. Thought too at first. But, I was like, but at the same time. He's not part of the, you know, stories that we know yeah. that are, like, the Disney stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to narrow it down because even at this point, we didn't know who Dr. Whale was. So we didn't know that it was maybe possibly outside the realm of, you know, yeah. the classic story tales of, you know, the Disney mm-hmm. ones and stuff that, that well, it could have been. the episode is called Hat Trick. I mean, come yes, on. Yes, but I'm talking about I when I first saw it. Together. And when I, I first saw it, the the name of the episode doesn't show up, you know. It wasn't like, you know, yeah. when I first watched it, it was live on TV. There was yeah, exactly no was... episode title. This was before we were doing podcasts and before we were like looked at the title and read the synopsises and you know none of that stuff like at all was mm-hmm. relevant to me. So the very first time had no clue who this was. Yeah, Zero exactly. Clue. 
Yeah, but they did drop clues. They, they did. They did, but I wasn't one of the thinking. I just yeah, thought, orange, oh my god, a serial killer. Well, orange coat was a dead giveaway for me anyway. Maybe. And I was also thinking, damn, he's hot. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alex is saying Lost was filmed by his house. Yeah, I know. And most of it was shot in Hawaii, so yeah, that's, that's actually really cool. Um, and yes, saying, Alex, Jennifer, and Sebastian did date. Yes. They dated on set. Yep. It was kind of cool. So, um, technically, Jennifer has been closer to the Winter Soldier than Cleo. <laughs> oh. Bang, bang, shots fired. Sorry, Cleo. Sorry, not sorry. Um, She's just going to come out of nowhere and just pile drive you to the wow. floor. <laughs> I actually just looked over to see, you know, if, if she was on Skype and she's not. So okay. I made sure to look before I said that. Make sure to look before. <laughs> Make sure she wasn't watching. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but, you know, it, it's when he starts, like, rambling off um, how, you know, he needs her help and make, the, make it work. And she's like, what? Mm -hmm. As soon as he pulled the hat out, like... Soon as the hat came out, I was like, oh, "He's the Mad Hatter!" Like I fucking knew instantly, obviously, and I was so happy, you know. Yeah. And then you know he starts questioning things, and it's like, okay, because he's the Mad Hatter, and we don't know exactly where he was at the time of the curse either. We just know he's here. He actually re retains his memories, but he because that maybe because he's mad to begin with, but um, he seemed in. The Enchanted Forest flashbacks, he seemed pretty calm and collected. He didn't seem he, crazy. He was. He was, to, well, you know, generally normal. It was what he was in Wonderland, and he had to make the hats and had to make them work, which was making him mad. You saw the piles of fabric and hats he had already right, so made. At, he was but at some mad point, he had to have left Wonderland point. to come back to the Enchanted Forest for you the curse. You don't know how he came back. Yeah, I no. think he was in Wonderland when the curse started, and Regina just brought him there. She just wanted to fuck with him. That's really... My theory. I don't think. I don't think. The that's why I think his punishment well, because Cora was still in Wonderland. Yeah, but <laughs> Regina didn't want Cora there. But I don't no, think she I, could pick and choose who she no. brought with her. Well, I mean, she did pick and was... she did sort of pick and choose because she chose Maleficent's punishment. Like she gave Maleficent a punishment, so I just assumed well, she gave Jefferson a punishment. She, she, I think she got to choose their roles and stuff like that, but I don't think she got to pluck people out of alternate realms. Yeah, but so I think he came back somehow. Yeah. But then he, how did he, he, he very oh, well could have gotten the hat to work and all of a sudden think, was there went looking for grace. I don't think the grace. hat could work though. Like if he could get it to work then I would imagine he would know how to make it work in this realm. I not think maybe he, he's the rabbit. Not if he There used, was no magic in this realm so he couldn't you make it work in this yeah, realm. Yeah, he can't make it work there. There's definitely magic in Wonderland. Um he could have used as you said the rabbit or he could have used um some kind of magical thing because we know that the caterpillar and, and stuff like that has you know from once upon a time in wonderland has all kinds of trinkets and gadgets and he could have some point met up with and... alice we don't know i would like to point out the plot holes in this episode um well they're plot holes now they weren't plot holes then when this episode aired because once upon a time wonderland didn't air yet but uh, we know cora has been trying to get to the enchanted forest ever since she's been in wonderland um, so, uh, Jefferson said the only way to get back is through a hat. We know that's not true because the rabbit can... Well, that he knew of. He, did. he probably didn't know about the rabbit. Yeah, but here's the thing. The rabbit can jump through realms, and Cora actually used the rabbit to jump through realms. In the Mother's Day episode, when she went to visit Regina in the Enchanted Forest, Regina said, how'd you get back here? She said, oh, I used a rabbit. So, why has Cora been sitting here on her ass the entire time... At this unless point, that's not, at this that's point, not she may not have yet. known about the rabbit. At this point, yeah. but why is it after not... that episode she still didn't go back? Because at the end of that Power. episode, she went back to Wonderland, and then she's still trying to get back. I don't think she was trying to get back. Yeah, because when Hook came to get her, like that's when Cora said, um, "How am I supposed to get back to wherever Enchanted Forest?" Well, I think when she, well, she came back, back I, don't, I don't remember exactly, but. Then when she came back, didn't, like, Regina, when Regina threw her back in, kind of make it so she can't return. Or. On that episode, yeah. Or that this all took place, she went, 
when she went in Wonderland, when did she see Regina? When she got married? Um, when she, okay, so she went, Regina pushed her into Wonderland, and she was there for a while, and in the Mother's Day episode, she came back. She was in the Enchanted Forest, and that was because it was Daniel's birthday. And um, she wanted Regina to get married, but Regina just refused. And then at the end of that episode, she sent, um, no, Cora just left on her own. And then she came back again in that one episode where it's Regina's birthday, and she came through the looking glass again, because apparently she can just do that. Well, the looking glass was, the the mirror was broken. I remember that. They broke yeah. that mirror. At the end after. of that episode, she so. broke it. So that that As portal was gone it. for her. So I think basically what it, what it came down to is this stuff all happened in the past. She went there, um, took the took um, Regina went there with with uh, the Mad Hatter, took her father mm -hmm. back, right? So now uh, Cora was looking to get back <clears> with her, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this now is after. This is all after uh, her wedding because she's the evil queen now. So this is, because um, Jefferson referred to her as the evil queen, or the queen, and almost, the queen like, and the red queen went nuts. The, or yeah. the, There's only one. I'm the, 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 so that's after she got married. The queen so of hearts, she was the, the red queen. The, what you're talking about, that has already happened, even though we haven't seen it yet, that's already so happened. She's, so she's been to... I'm still, yeah, but I'm still confused. Like, there's clearly ways to get back to the right. So he, that she's used. He's, yeah, so the, the looking glass was broken. She couldn't use that But anymore. the rabbit is still... Mm -hmm. The rabbit is still there, but she may not have access to the rabbit. Because, don't forget, the Red Queen stole her for a while. And then yeah, the, the red, rabbit the is hiding a lot of the time. So it's not just like, rabbit. hey, you can't just call the rabbit up and be like, hey, come over, I need a portal. Like, it, it doesn't work that way. They didn't have fun. Yeah, we don't know how Cora and the and Anastasia's relationship were in Wonderland. So, so I think know. I think what happened they, now is after all of this stuff and Cora um, and Regina's curse went through. Now she has a reason to go back, and that's why she was actively looking to get back to the Enchanted Forest because of the curse. She was looking to get back there. So I think that logistically, maybe that makes sense now. But. That's how, it makes sense in my head anyway. But uh, we know that yeah. Jefferson has been to Wonderland before. Um, yeah, you so don't know. Why do you hate yeah, Wonderland? Hate Jefferson? What's wrong with it? But see, now I've always wanted to do more backstory of Jefferson and what and that side, and I thought we would see that in Wonderland, but he was, you know, contracted to do some to do some stupid movies. They're oh, gonna have to Cleo's gonna off with your head. I know it's like a taboo thing to say, but they're going. If they want him to come back, they have to recast him. But I mean, I think they've said they've that they don't want to do that at all. Nope. Mm -mm. They said and... they don't. He's such a. I mean, I. I mean, I understand why they cast recasted like, let's say Robin Hood. He was a one-off character that they brought back. This he. There was multiple. You know, he has a lot of face time. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so yeah. he's a fairly. Big. It just seems like, you know, yes, okay, it's, you know, an actor that we all want to see back, but it's also a character that we want to see. But who can, you know, you don't if they can find, kind of they, but yeah, they, if they that's can why find someone to pull it off, I would be okay. That's why they've recast but. Jafar coming up in the next season. They said that. They said sometimes, you know, actors aren't available and we need the character or whatever. They said that. But they've also said they're not recasting the Mad Hatter. They already yeah. said that's not happening. They, they've said it. I, I did mention that. But I mean, like, at this point, the fans are kind of like, a lot of us are like, we need the Mad Hatter back. We need his, we need I, that story. Need the story. There's, there's a hole. There's I, like can, hole I can get over, story. I can get over recasting Jafar because Jafar is a sorcerer and could change his appearance and whatever. I can get over that. That makes sense in my head. Even if it's not explained, I could explain it off in my head. But changing the Mad Hatter's appearance, I can't. Like, there's no logical explanation. I'd be furious if they recast him. Like, I pro I, I almost want to say I would stop watching the show if they recast the Mad Hatter. What we need to do is all us 
all his wonsters need to like start writing Sebastian on Facebook, Twitter, anything he's in. Mm -hmm. Handwrite it. Email him. Email his book. Say, you can get Please. like Jim Carrey or something to play the Mad Hatter, and I still <laughs> wouldn't watch no. it. No, I'm just saying. No. I'm just saying. That'd I still wouldn't watch it. I love Jim Carrey, but I no, still wouldn't we need, watch it. We need to start a campaign to bring him back, at least to have some kind of closure. I mean, our last image of him was him after the after the curse, him grabbing his daughter and leaving. Okay. Right. What's funny well, in my head is yet. to bring him back would be in in these episodes, he's tall. He's, he's kind of, he's fit, but he's scrawny. You bring him back now and he's going to be like the freaking rock walking down the street. Well, they can explain that in any number of ways because he, he left with Grace. We don't know where he went. He went traveling yeah. back through realms for all we know. And yeah. they, they could do whatever they want with it, you know? It's true, but I still think and, it'd be funny. And, and, and as people and people that did watch Wonderland were hoping to see at least a cameo of him, and they did yeah. even show him once, and it was really it, it was really disappointing. Yeah, well, this and you know, and then this episode too. It's like you know, the caterpillar's got a different voice from you know the Wonderland one. They had recast the voice for it. Um, which is, I think, okay, because the Caterpillar here really didn't say he didn't too say much. much. And he yeah. sounded like a complete idiot. I don't mean the voice actor was an idiot, I just mean, like, what the hell was he even saying? Like, he was mumbling, well, and, like, I don't even... Who are you? He was puffing on a hookah, he was probably really stoned. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so. That's what Caterpillars do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I'm, I'm alright with that that recast whatever um you know this is why like doing uh things out of order too like really start messing up with because i would have loved to see will scarlet in this episode like you know but obviously <laughs> once upon a time in wonderland hasn't happened yet they never cast it you know anything like that i would have just i would have loved it even if it was no, just like jumping he's everywhere walking in the background somewhere you know but unfortunately they don't know that that's gonna happen he was in oz yeah with robin hood Probably. Yeah, you're probably right. So, um, but yeah. What was he doing? Oz? I don't know. I don't know. I just, and also I did pause a little bit, not too, for too long, when they were in the, I remember last time we were like, there, there was the Oz door. There, there was a door that looked very steampunkish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's and a then there was the, one, um... And there was one that looked very much like out of like um, Frankenstein type Victorian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, was... we, we do go back in later anyway and actually go through that door. Um, so, but yeah, there, there's a bunch of them in there. Um, I'm hoping we see the hat again at some point, even if we don't one see of the them hat. Looks like, one of them looked like the door that the author was trapped in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that realm, that like the portal room that they're in, the, the door room, whatever you want to call it, that may not be exclusive to the hat. That yep. the hat might just be one way to get in there. So, um, it reminds me of well, not it doesn't remind me visually of that. But if anybody has read The Magician's Nephew, which is the um, prequel to like the first Narnia book, there is a realm specifically to take you to other realms. Right. And um, in, in Narnia, it's like it's, Monsters it's a Inc. They have all the yeah, doors. Kind of, yeah, like. Kind of like that, but this takes it a different <laughs> Like Nightmare Before Christmas with all the tree doors. Oh, yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, in Narnia, it was a forest, but, like, you jump into you jump into little puddles, mm -hmm. and then the puddles take you to different places. Right. I, I know I jump into puddles. I'll just keep with the closet. Yeah, so... I the <laughs> You know, this, this episode really showed, you know, Mad Hatter's relationship with Grace back in the Enchanted Forest, and, you know, unfortunately, he had to lie to his daughter about knowing the queen... Um, See, and this is where I wish they would do more backstory because they're like he has a relationship with the queen, and they obviously history. have a history. Yeah, How they have a history. I want to know this. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe want even more. <laughs> yeah, and then but you know we see the queen manipulating him by disguising uh, herself as the peddler um, and refusing to like three copper go down three copper on the price of uh, a toy. You know, people gotta make money, you know? Yeah. It's one silver. Sorry. Yeah. The economy. I mean, it was a really well-made rabbit. <laughs> it's true. Well, it... I don't blame the peddler. I blame Regina. But regardless, I wouldn't put... 
the, there's a price on it for a reason. Right? You can't just... That'd be like going into a grocery store and just being like, yeah, I don't want to pay 10 cents for this apple. Can you give it to me for 7 cents? The cashier's going to look at you like, what? You know? It doesn't work that way. There's a price on it. You got to pay it. That's the end of the story. I mean, when it comes to um, markets like that, you can Haggle. negotiate. There's a, there's a little, yeah, there's like, there's wiggle room when it comes to pricing. But yes. when you're talking about the supermarkets, like actual stores where there's franchise, yes, the, the price is set because That's hundreds corporate. and thousands of people go into the store. They they can't haggle with every person. Everybody, you'd be waiting there for days I'm gonna to get start, food. I'm going to start trying to haggle in grocery stores now. It's going to be my new thing. <laughs> oh, God, please film that. Every, yeah. every corporate, I'm going to start ha haggling. Target, Walmart. You're going to be freaking banned from all, from all the stores. The stores. Yeah. Well, you know, not only does he have this history, he has a history. Something he did with Regine in the past caused his wife to die. Yeah. Mm. I want to so, know So, he, well, he said, he said, you know, what, you know, what I, last time I did something for you, um, my daughter lost her mom. Mm -hmm. So whether or not she died or... She went she to another realm. Went to another realm. If Actually, she went like, to another realm, her? I think I think he would actively be trying to find her. Yeah, so I'm gonna, maybe he I'm doesn't go know with... where she went. Maybe yeah, maybe That's he doesn't know too. exactly what happened. He just assumed that she died. Maybe she's in this new realm. We're gonna see in season six. Because in because in it's this, actually it's actually not a new in realm. In this world, in this world, lost Let's doesn't do always mean dead. <laughs> the the land of untold stories or whatever is actually not a realm. It's a it's a location. Um, okay, maybe she's there. Yeah. Could be. Because um, at this point, it is an untold story. We we don't know what the hell happened to her. An untold story that I want that to happen is really Hunchback Notre Dame. Yes, um, that too. It'd be interesting if she's out as Esmeralda. Um, because I, I distinctly remember in that episode, we saw a woman in that land who looked exactly like Esmeralda. And, I, and I'm, I'm not convinced that it's not Esmeralda. Hunchback, or, Hunchback in Notre Dame, anyone? That was a Disney movie? Yeah, I think could be. Sure. Yeah, could be. Um, and then ultimately, you know, this this is what led him to um, get leaving his daughter behind, you know, and and this is why uh, never leave family behind. Yeah, um, except you know, she goes, yeah, you were right, Jefferson. Never, you don't abandon family, but he didn't really abandon her. He was going back, no. you know. He was yeah. she go forced back. him to to abandon, and okay. uh, ultimately led him to having his head chopped off. I mean, but it's, but it's okay. It's people okay. go to work every day, and they have to live their kids at daycare, and you know, the kids go to school. Yeah, and then you know, in most cases, parents always do come back. This is the same thing with Jefferson. He had a job to do. He was going to come back, but Regina fucked him over. Yeah, and I don't yeah. care. But he's still alive with his head <laughs> chopped off, and then you know, that's that's actually you know what starts getting. This is this is where Emma, I think. These last two episodes are really when Emma starts starts to believe. It, it's the, 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 the push, right? The key, you know, the skeleton keys, I think, is the first time she's like, something's not right, you know? But it's not the, oh, you know, it's the curse thing. She's just like, why is Regina, you know, there's, she's thinking, you know, something's not right. But she's trying to think, you know, from a, lo a logistic episode. But here you have uh, Jefferson... You know, talking to Emma, and he brings up Henry's story books, and he's honestly like crazy, insane, like the Mad Hatter, you know that you know from the the stories he's and not stuff. He knows the truth. And then he, yeah, he's sitting there going, telling her everything there is, and he's like, "Yeah, what's a story?" And you know, she's just like, "What do you mean?" Well, she plays story? along because she wants to leave, but I think there's uh, there's a part of her that's inside well, her head. Of like, course, there is, and he's she just said, like in the next room. My she said, "If you're right, then in the next room is my mother." Right. And, I, and she says, I want to believe that that is my mother. Right. And then he's just like, you know, what is what is the Civil War? You learned about the Civil War in a history book? It's, it's a history book. How does that make it less real? Because the uh, story, you know, story, uh, fairy tales are, are based on what? Imagination? Where did it come from? You know? And then he says, like, one of the most powerful lines this episode was, everyone wants, to, wants magical solutions to their problems, but no one believes in magic. Yeah, everybody uh -huh. refuses to believe in it. Yeah. And, you know, he goes on to state that there are infinite more worlds. Each land has their own rules, some with, uh, some without magic. 
and they're parallel. They run together. Yeah. So whether or not, you know, the whole speed thing, like if one day's faster than the other, we don't know. But we do know they're together. They're kind of like the Doctor Who thing. They're all together. They're happening at the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why you have... But some might go slower than others. That's why you have uh-huh. Victorian Alice in Wonderland, which, you know, is in the Victorian era, but it's not time travel. You know, it's uh-huh. a whole new realm. So, uh, that was actually one of our questions I remember we had when we were covering the Once, a ton of, Once Upon a Time uh-huh. podcast. Was the rabbit time traveling, or was it using a portal to another realm? And then Adam and Eddie had later confirmed, I think after the show had ended, that they were not time traveling that the rabbit was literally going between realms and there was a victorian era realm that that's where alice lived yeah so. possibly where wendy lives too yeah the, well he said yeah that the the england was another realm as well there's two versions of england yes um, that's alice's and possibly wendy's england and cruella's england yeah so three who knows? Because, it's, they're because all then there's running real world together. England. Yeah. Don't forget real world England. Yeah, but that one's boring. Well, it like, still <laughs> makes three. So three, possibly four. Eh. But yeah. So um, yeah, there's still that whole backstory. And this, but, but this then, episode is making one of them. And then I think like, you know, that stuff really got to Emma. But I think the, the moment that really, really made her think and... They spent a little time focused on it, but it was never drawn any attention to. Like, yeah, it was drawn attention to. That's not the right word, but it was never spoken in dialogue between Emma. Uh, it's when um, she goes to save uh, Eminem, and then uh, she grabbed, you know, Emma smacks him with the telescope and all that. Like, that whole scene when he... Um, he showed the uh, the scar. You finally see the scar in his neck where he lost his head, you know, and it's just mm-hmm. like whole scar wrapped around his entire neck and she's looking at it like, holy shit, like his head was sewn back on. That's like the, the kind of shit that's going through her head, you know, but she doesn't and address it and all he goes is off with his head, you know, he just, he goes, that's the only what dialogue. Staring that's, at. That's, that's, yeah. That's the only dialogue in reference to it, so, like, it's helping her believe. And then when Eminem shoves her out the window, like, well, Taekwondo Ma- kicks her. Mary Margaret hit him Eminem. with the croquet mallet. Yeah. Which and is the queen plays croquet. Croquet. Yep. Um, you know, and then he disappears <clears throat> when he falls out the window. Now, did we ever it, find out what happened? I don't think so, but, did like, he actually, he just... Did he go to another realm? It, that's what it makes you think. Did. It makes you think he fell into the hat. But yeah, because of the way that they have like the camera view coming out of the cat uh, hat, no, the cat, the, the hat, cat. The, cat. The, hat. the cat in the hat, and it, yeah, and you know you see the cat in the hat. you see it, or the hat what's the her cat. face looking. I'm gonna call her what's her face. You call her Eminem. I'll call her what's her face. She's looking in the hat, and like the camera view is coming in. You can see her face. So like it makes you think that yes, he went into the hat when he fell. Right. And how to get back. Well, that's the thing is, next time we see him, he's just in Storybrook again. Like, we Where'd go. Where'd you go? He grabs yeah. his daughter and leaves. To my knowledge, to my recollection, we don't find out what, ever, what he ever did. If he ran no, away. Was, or, he was really know. sketchy after the thing, because uh, he was talking to David sketchy. at a table, I remember. And, like, David turned around to do something, and he ran off. Yeah. So I was like, okay. You know, and then that's when they, they escape, and... Uh, Emma gives Eminem the keys to her car and basically says, you know, do what you gotta do and I highly recommend you staying and she decides to go back in her cell and Regina is just completely shocked that she was there and that's when her and Gold had the conversation now about, you know, how I thought you said that this, you know, she'd leave or whatever, so yeah, it's just I know, the hat trick this this episode just makes me Wants me more background of the Mad Hatter and yeah. makes me realize how much in Wonderland I was hoping and hoping and hoping they would bring him in, but they never, you know, they couldn't, obviously. Yeah. But are... this is where I started getting really excited because, yeah, I knew watching this that there, like, for the very first time, that there weren't many episodes left. You know, we were coming toward the end. And to uh-huh. me, 
everything this this episode and the red up ep- well the red episode was just exciting because it was new it was different it was unique kind of thing then you had the heart of darkness that was just like blah it's the same thing but here we have the mad hatter and it really felt like the story was escalating like mary we looks like yeah but it, it looks like mary's about to get arrested like this storyline to me is just about over you know at this point watching it's coming to a head so that's exciting that this fucking boring thing is almost done, and you're still kind of wondering, how the fuck is she going to get out of it at this point? Even even if you don't care, like, you're like this is the worst story ever, you still have this inkling of, okay, now that I've stopped caring about it, how the fuck is she going to get out of it? Because you know she's got to get out at some point, you know, it's just whatever. But So you're you're in a basically an impossible situation, that you, you know, and then, then you have the, the Hatter, and like Jacob said, you're expanding on the world and everything, and it's just like, this is much bigger than we originally thought, and it's just, it's insane. And it's like just... It's not just these two realms that we've been seeing. Mm-hmm. And, we, and now we yeah. know that, you know, there's more people that actually know who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... That's his curse. That's his curse. Punishment. Yeah, that's, a, I think that's a huge question. Was he in Wonderland when the curse happened, or was he back? I don't think he was. Back or... I wonder if he like just got back. He like just stepped through the portal and poof. <laughs> poof. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. it's like opens the door, enchanted forest. Okay, I'm gonna walk through. He walks through and he's in Storybrook instead. It's like what? What yeah. happened? Like yeah. just actually missed the curse what are these and strange just carriages like, going around. Caught like the wave mm-hmm. of it. He can't, he walked oh, through at the like right. the worst time imaginable. <sighs> Dude, <laughs> bad luck. <laughs> bad, bad, bad luck. luck. That, that in my my head canon, that's how it happened, though. Right. <laughs> if we if we never find out how it really happened, in my head, that's ac- absolutely one hundred percent how it really happened. It's as about as plausible as anything we could come up with. Yep. We may never know. No. The world may never know, but I wish we did because that will we'll supposedly we'll also never know how many licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll Center for Tootsie Pop. But it's a hundred. I did that once. I did it once too, and I can't, I was young though. I was like, I wrote it down because I was so proud of myself. I put it on the It took now, a time. I, no, I, I remember. I if we remember, I was in a mall and I did it um, all day, and because I got it at the mall and I was doing it until like the very end of the day, and I when I finally did it, I was like cheering and I was like the happiest like eight year old ever, and I wrote it down and it was, and I remember and I remember the number. It was two hundred and seventy five licks. Now, is that for all of the pop to go away, or is that just to the first moment in which you tasted Tootsie Roll? No, it was no because the challenge was get to the Tootsie Roll Center, and I got okay. to the center, so that's okay. what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did 153 licks, so maybe my, my tongue saliva is more acidic. acidic. Yours is weak. It's like, um, it's like, um, I don't know, I don't know, maybe my tongue was smaller than yours, but that's... Or, or maybe that's somebody I, looked I, harder I, than the other, I just I, don't I, even I, want to get into this conversation. We're discussing, we're discussing licking. Yeah. Two, two, two men can't discuss licking small round objects no. well, what uh, speaking of round objects i could never finish those giant um lollipops that you get sometimes the yeah, jawbreakers never... that were like this big I used to oh yeah I, i'm still working on one <laughs> I, bought, I bought it three days ago <laughs> yeah you get one of those the thing would last me a week it's, it's hard to put big balls in your mouth um so don't don't bite you'll break all yeah, your yeah you'll break your jaw um Next next week we'll be discussing uh, episodes eighteen and nineteen, which is Stable Boy, in which we find out exactly what Snow did to Regina, uh, and uh, episode nineteen, The Return, which we learn August's true identity. So. Okie dokie. That will be fun. I'm was really. Was that the episode we also uh, first see the dragon? That's the last. No, wait. No, we don't see him until season. No, we don't see him until season two. It was a. I know it was a later flashback with August. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's in season one. Um, Actually, in that episode, we don't get August's backstory. Yeah, no, it's in season. It's actually it might not even be till season three, because uh, Tamara was there from. Mm -hmm. She's season two. 
Is she season two? Okay. So yeah, it's season two. Uh, it's the people. The jerks. The Peter Pan people. The Peter Pan people. Yeah. Who didn't know they were working Peter Pan? Yeah. We did at the point. No. Yeah. So actually, I don't know now. I don't know if it was season two setting up her character. Yeah, I think it was because we were under the impression she didn't know magic was there. That's and when that we was met the reveal mm-hmm. that we she met was, Neil. She and knew we... about magic the whole time. So yeah, so that's when we find that. But no, the the return is just the the Bellfire, uh stuff. Bellfire and Pinocchio, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know if Bale's in it. I think he is. But yeah, so Maybe. we'll get that Marco and all all that fun shit. So. Um, you guys have anything else before we wrap this up? I should probably explain why I don't like Jefferson because people are people um, have asked me that. People who I talk to, they're like, "Why do you hate Jefferson?" I'm like, "Okay, I'll tell you why I hate Jefferson. I don't hate him. I just don't love him." Uh-huh. So I don't find him charming in the slightest. Um, I don't. I don't know why. It's just something about his face. I don't like it. Um, and I don't care about his relationship with his daughter. I just there was just something about this episode. I like the episode fine. It's actually one of my favorite episodes, but he's not one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't ruin the episode for me, but like I don't I don't care about his relationship with his daughter. I don't feel sorry for him whatsoever. I don't know what it is. I just don't. And his plan doesn't make sense. He wants Emma to make this hat work even though she doesn't have magic, but he he thinks that she can make it work. And his plan is to go back to the Enchanted Forest. Why do you want to go back to the Enchanted Forest? That is not going to fix anything, because your daughter is still not going to know He doesn't know how the curse the works. Father. He doesn't know how it works. I think he's bad! He, he's the Mad Hatter. But I think here's, he's, here's he what he figures, says. Um, he figures that Sasha, Emma, yeah. because, Sorry, because Alex, Emma, um, because Emma came into town, and the clock started working again, and, and you know, you know, things were changing at that point because he was stuck in that house he couldn't leave anymore and then you know emma breaks all of that that she has the potential to get the hats magic to work yeah that's not my problem my problem and then is... when he goes and he i think what he figures also with the curse is that because the curse is in storybrook if he goes back to the enchanted forest that everybody like grace will get her memories back and remember who he is that's not exactly how it works, but okay. No, so I know, but one of my one of, my, one of the things that, that he said was, um, he said you can't. She like Emma asked him, why can't you just tell her that you're her father? He says, I can't do that because you can't make someone aware of the curse because when you do that, you have two conflicting personalities just like clashing with each other. And he he says, doesn't want to break her like, reality. I know what that's like. He's like, yeah, he's like, that'll break her reality. He's like, I know what that's like. He's like, it drives you mad. Like, that's not why you went mad. Because you have one personality. Because you were never technically cursed. So you went mad for a completely different reason. You went mad because you made a bunch of hats and you couldn't get them to work. So I don't <laughs> you were understand. locked up making hats. So I don't understand hats. what makes you think not telling her would, like, break her. Because we've seen that even people with two conflicting personalities, we saw it at the end of, like, what was it, season two? At the beginning of season two, these people, they still had their memories of their past selves and, like, their storybook selves, and they were fine. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. They were very, very confused. It took a little while, but... Yeah, I don't under, but I don't understand what his logic is. I mean, I know he's mad, so he doesn't have logic. He does. I was going to say, he has no logic. <laughs> he's also been so isolated for so long, you know? He's living this double life. Like, it's not that... It's not that, oh, we were all under a spell and that's so weird or whatever, but it's knowing that you're under the spell and you have these two different personalities that are conflicting, fighting at the same time, and you remember your daughter and you're watching your daughter live her life with another family and nothing you can do is gonna... Like, can you imagine if all of a sudden some stranger on the street that you've never met before started running up to you and being like, you're actually my son or daughter and you're under a curse. And you'd be like, what I the need fuck adult. are you talking about? Like, help me. Somebody help. Like, I'm trying, somebody's trying to kidnap me. You know, like, you would not be like, oh, yeah, you're right. I should go with you. You know, nobody's going to mm-hmm. do that. So, you know, that is what's driving him further insane than he already and is. And even if he hurt yeah, and, uh, 
Sasha, I knew exactly what he meant. Sasha was Tamara. Tamara's her, ca- her character on Once Upon a Time, and Sasha is her character on The Walking Dead. It's the same actress. But yeah. Oh, ha! <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wait, no, don't watch that. Yeah. So. It'll, it'll be it'll be good. I can't wait. Uh, once again, Stable Boy. It was interesting, like, my my early quick appearance before watching the episode, you know, whatever, my, my remembrance of the episode. It's another one of those charming, well, it's not charming, but it's more, you know, Snow episode. But this is where we get young Snow and the actress. I, I remember she's fantastic and I loved her. But it was just that. like, I don't care about Snow's backstory because I don't like Snow. You know? This is more Regina's backstory. Yeah, it kind of is, but there's it's still a big emphasis on snow. But it involves, and I hate snow. Um, yeah, but we get including to see the Re- weather. Re- I'm not just talking about the character. I'm also including the weather. Um, <laughs> but the return was, you know, another episode that I really, really enjoyed. So, you know. Oh, well, at this point, we are all totally guessing who that our August was. Yeah, I thought so. my first theory was that he was Henry. So. Uh, there. Well, I thought so oh, when he first uh, came in, but, uh, you know, with Emma not even knowing who he is, so I was like, that's the son of Yeah. And then I thought about his name, August. I'm like, okay. Is that a clue? No, no. no. It's, it's a clue for I Lost. That's all. Yeah, but it's not a clue for who he is. Well, I guess kind of. I don't know. Go so, like I try to think of his personality. I'm like, and trying to like think of like every single thing he says. I'm like, okay, who are you? And I just could not figure it out. Yeah, he he was honestly he was a shock. I remember that much. He was a shock. And then right? I thought he was the author of the book. That was like my final theory that he was the mm-hmm. author of the book. I think that was my first theory when we saw him adding pages to the book. That was mm-hmm. it. like one of the first things we find out. He is an author. He has yeah. a typewriter. He's adding pages to the story. He's pointing Henry He's to look in the storybook. The well, that's how I thought he was. You know. Yeah, that's who I thought he was, but then he's not. Well, actually, even after his reveal, I still thought he was the author. Yeah. Until we found out that the actual author is not him. Yep. All right, so I think that about does it. Uh, Nikki, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter at LadyBenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Excellent. Rachel, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter at Savannah17. Uh, that's about it right now. Okay. Jake, <laughs> where can the people find you? I'm here on YouTube at Jacob Salazar, or you can find me on Twitter. Tweet at me throughout the week, throughout the life, at To Nowhere Land. That is T O N O W H E R E L E N D. Join the Nowhere Land Society. <laughs> you can find me down below at Phenomenon. P H E N O M E D O M. You can find us all and more. On Facebook, Gmail, G+, Twitter, <coughs> and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some, for you, some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Until next week. See you later. Blow up his Twitter. Want... Get him back on the show. Get him Even though I don't like him, but get him back on the show. I want answers. <laughs> Damn it. Give us the answers. And bring, and bring and see if you can get Will and Anastasia on the show. We can we handle the truth. Because I, because I want I want confirmation that Anastasia is Cinderella's stepsister. <laughs> I'm not gonna be satisfied until we don't get that. <laughs>